Hi there, my name is Susan Kelly and today we're going to be painting this fun spring bunny. I'm just going to show you how to dilute regular acrylic paint with water to create this soft, sweet little bunny. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is find a really, really old piece of graphite paper because when you're doing a watercolor or anything pastel, you don't want to have a lot of dark graphite lines to deal with. So I'm using a very old, small piece. I've already got my I've already got my paper folded underneath, and now I'm just going to transfer very lightly where I want the rows, the main rows, the lettering, and the bunny. The rest I'm going to freehand. And I'm going to peek under and just see if it shows and make sure it's very faint. You do want to go ahead and transfer all of the details at this time because we're not going to paint over in layers uh, like we sometimes do. So you want to know where the flowers are. You want to know where the eye and the nose are. Of course, they're not that important because we'll be doing black and that can cover. But um, just to get in a habit of when you're doing the watercolor or the pastel, you want to make sure that you do trace enough of the pattern on or transfer enough of the pattern on so you don't have to keep redoing it. Okay, and I think I do want a flower in this corner. Get the fender before I let go. Okay. So here is the faint transferred pattern. I recommend if you have new graphite that you rub it a lot on a paper towel to remove a lot of the graphite before you transfer the pattern. You do not want a dark pattern on there. The next thing we're going to do is paint the lettering with white. I'm going to use um, my number three round. I'm going to wet the bristles with water, but I'm not going to wet the paint. I'm not putting water in the paint. Just want an even flow of the white not going to show up very much on your white paper, but hopefully you'll be able to see it because the two colors of white are probably a little bit different. And once it's dry, you'll be able to hold it up to the light and probably, hopefully, be able to see if you missed any spots. But just fill in your letters. Since we're using a paper surface, it's a little more delicate than wood or other surfaces, so using a light touch and kind of planning what you're doing before you do it will help. You don't want to be rough with this. Okay, so all of my letters now are white. I think you can see that probably. Next, we're going to use antique white and we're going to water that down quite a bit. This is technically a watered down acrylic painting. It's not really watercolor. Um, I guess it would be considered a watercolor painting but it doesn't have your basic watercolor techniques. I am not a watercolor artist so uh, you'll just have to... so this is just kind of a fun quick rendition of that. I put way too much paint. You just need a tiny drop of paint because we're going to add a puddle of water and you need just barely any of that paint to, to come into the water. So I'm bringing the paint down into the water. One tiny little drop of paint was all I needed. 
I'm just used to putting more amounts out on my palette. You want it to be very transparent, very runny, and I'm going to touch my brush onto a paper towel just to remove that extra bunch of water. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in my bunny. I'm going to avoid the flowers and the um, eye. It's okay if you get it in the eye because the eye is darker, but I'm going to try to avoid the eye. When I get up around the flowers, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush to fill in that area. And I don't want to see real choppy watermarks, so I'm going to move fast. I'm going to try to move the paint around very quickly. And I'm going to fill in the head first. Try to get it all nice and even, evenly coated. I'm just kind of coloring it in. Stay within the lines if you can. You really don't want any one area to dry before you keep working. So just keep quickly loading your brush and get all of the areas filled in so that nothing uh, dries in any particular section. If you're getting really dark clumps, um, you need to add more water into the paint. Okay, so now I'm going to switch down to that number three round. Same load, uh, same paint. I'm going to go ahead and load that brush and fill in these other areas around the flowers. And I'll do the ears as well. I'm not going to do the pink part of the ears. I believe they say the watercolor should be 80% water and 20% paint, but honestly, I think I used more like 90% water. Just want very little paint, and it'll go a long way. So I'm just kind of smoothing it out. So now we have our bunny filled in. We're going to let that bunny dry. Okay, my bunny's now dry. I'm going to go back with some cocoa. And I'm going to add just a tiny touch of shadow. So basically for the shading I'm going to do, that is the size of the puddle that you need of paint. And just water that down. And again, these rules do not apply for real watercolor painting because you, you have to have a certain amount of paint versus water uh, not too much because if you have too much water the paint will fade out or if you're keeping a permanent piece you need to learn more rules about watercolor painting um, but this is just a fun little watercolor so I'm not worried about the rules okay so with my cocoa I'm going to keep a wet flat brush handy. It's nice and wet. I've, I've dipped it in the water and see it's shiny on my finger. I dipped it in the water and then I touched it to a paper towel. I'm going to do a little bit of shading around the foot or feet. I'm just going to use my round brush. While that's wet, I'm going to go back and dab that in and spread it out with that flat brush. It's real important to do while it's wet. You don't want to leave a ring. Okay, so you just want to dab it until you get a little bit of shading. I'll do that again over here on this foot. 
pull that out, blend it in before it dries. This little foot can be a little darker. And I want to lay my brush. I don't want to stand it up on edge. I want to lean it uh, to tap and blot. Oops. This little foot can be a little darker there. So I'll just leave that shadow. This is still drying. I'm not going to keep working in that area. Let's go under the head. Again, this is watered down paint and then we're going to spread it out with the wet brush. Blend that in. Do the same right here on the tail. So that's wet paint. And pull that into the rest of the tail. Just kind of maneuvering the paint a little bit. Go ahead and add a little bit of that on the ears as well, right on the base of the ears. Maybe even add a little bit on the back side of the head. If it's not blending well, you most likely need to have a little more water in your brushes and in the paint. Okay, next is the eye. Way too much, uh, way too much paint I have there. I can't get used to getting those tiny little dots of paint that you need. This is for the eye and the nose. Always remember to touch it to a paper towel, and very carefully fill in the eye. And remember to move the paint quickly because it'll start to dry. The water, the card absorbs the water pretty quickly. Now I'm dabbing this excess out on a paper towel. Um, oop. I'm just spreading that around. And then 
and give him a little bitty bunny nose. Now we're going to switch to our 18 0 liner. That same super thin runny paint. Roll it around on the palette. I'm going to make some tiny little eyelashes. Right here in the tip corner. And some little whiskers on this side. And just tiny little whiskers on the other side there. Now for the roses and all the pink parts. Oh yes, once again, way too much paint. Lots of water. Very little paint. Okay, we're going to touch that on a paper towel. We're going to fill in these roses. I'm going to use my um, number three round, but if the paint doesn't spread properly, I will switch and move it around with my um, flat brush. Fill the one in down here. You can use your flat brush or your round brush. Uh, flat brush seems to fill in better and quicker. Uh, for the big roses. Alright, now for the small roses, we're going to just go around with some dabs of uneven color. I'm going to make kind of a cute little border. It's really too dark really need to lighten that up with more water. So I just wet my brush and I'm just pulling some of that paint out because it got a little too dark. These don't have to be completely even. They can be, you know, scattered around. Um, weave them in and out a little bit, you know, alternate where they are. Uh, or they can just, just wherever you like them. There, it's just going to be a little bit of a border there. So again, if I have, if I have too much paint, uh, too dark of a color, I'm just touching uh, the brush to a paper towel and then I come back and lift some of that paint. So you just want kind of cute little um, shapes that aren't exactly oval. Okay, and while we have that pink, I'm going to go right into the ears and put the pink in the inside of the bunny's ears. And we're also going to take a tiny dab, put it right here on the bunny's cheek. Now before this dries, you want to get your wet 
flat brush and blend that out so that it doesn't have any harsh edges. That's much better. Okay. Now with that same rose color, I'm going to start putting some um, shadow. All my roses are dry, by the way. So this is the watered down rose color here. I'm just side loading into that watery paint. And I'm going to make a dip where um, the flower center should be. And then blend that out. You can also do a little shading on the um, small flowers. I'm going to put a little bit of a dip in each of the flowers. You can make them turn, go in different directions. Here's another tip. Don't let your cat walk on your project with dirty feet. So my cat has given me her extra special gift of um, paw prints, little bits of paw prints on my project that I can't get off. So anyway, um, just uh, never turn your back on your cat. Now I'm going to paint in the leaves. Oh, I added the pink flowers on the bunny's head and if you'll notice I did not go around the leaves when I painted the bunny I only went around the flowers that's because the leaves are really small and this is a very bright green and I didn't mind that it was going to be toned down a little bit um, painting it over top of that background of the bunny color uh, but for the rest of the leaves they are um, going to be a little bit lighter or a little bit brighter. So I'm just filling those in with sour apple. And I'm going to add just some cute little splashes of leaves by my little rose buds. Okay, I've got my green um, based in. Now I'm just going to add some little greenery around my bunny's halo. Okay, so I just got some green there. Now I'm going back with more green uh, kind of to shade on the leaves. So I'm going to blend that in just like we did before uh, with the other color. Just blend give a little bit of a shadow color on all of the little leaves. Just a touch. You don't need much. Just going around the base of the small leaves there.
Okay, now we're going to float some white. I'm going to wet the brush, and this is going to be more like just regular floating. Side load into the white. And I'm going to highlight the roses and give them a few petals. It's going to be very random. Just want to give it uh, the illusion that there's some petals in there. And that just makes a really pretty quick rose. Okay, let me do that again and I'll show you. What I did was um, highlight on the opposite side from where I just shaded earlier. So I'm going to stroke across that highlight there. Stroke across the bottom there. Kind of a back-to-back -back float. The darker pink is on the other side. Like I floated this way with the darker pink. Now I'm floating this way with the white. And then I'm going to pull in just up on the chisel edge some additional strokes. Around the top. And then pull a few And again, you don't really want to make this too detailed. I think I'll redo this one here. Need to have one there. And then a couple down in there. You can just go around all of your little roses with just a little highlight. Don't forget the ones on the bunny's head. You need to give a little tiny bit of highlight on those as well. Just a tiny touch. Okay, now comes the fun part. It's putting in the background. So, we're going to use a drop of my favorite blue Indian turquoise. Probably way too much, but for this background I want to make sure that I have enough paint. I'm going to bring over a lot of that water from my water basin. Clear water. Clean water, I mean. I'm going to just water down that paint, swirl it around, make it nice and runny. And I'm going to paint in the background around all of my cute little details. So you want to move along pretty quickly, but you want to be careful not to get it on any of the painted parts. Okay, so let's just pick an area and get started. And just keep working. Don't stop in this with this step. Just keep working until you get it done. We're going to avoid all of the lettering as well. And that's a little too much. I forgot to touch it to my paper towel. And I'm just going to scrub this in carefully. Run it right up to all of the other painted areas. It's going to get a little bit uh, blotchy. And that can't be helped because the water is being absorbed by the paper. But you want to keep moving. You can paint back over any of the areas of your letters if you accidentally get it on your lettering. Just make sure you get it up to all of your um, flowers and up to the lettering. You don't want to see any of the card background. And if you get too dark of an area, quickly add a little more water in your brush and brush back over it and that will spread it out. Keep your number three round handy. 
because we're going to be using that around these letters. And again, you know, you're going to have some splotches, which really makes it kind of pretty. You just don't want any obvious splotches uh, that make a pattern, let's, like say around your lettering or, or whatever. So um, try to just move really quickly around your letters. May not need to switch down to the um, other brush. This is just like coloring in a coloring book, actually. It's pretty easy. Just kind of filling in with a second coat, just to darken this up a little. Let it dry because it's going to give you a whole different look once it's dry. And um, you really don't want to make it your final coat. Uh, you really want to let it dry before you decide whether you want to add more or need to fix any particular areas. Um, so just at this point, go ahead and let it dry. Then we'll be back. Still letting my card dry. It's getting there. With the white, I touched up the word spring. Also with white, I'm just going to float a tiny bit of this in the bunny's eye. We can go add it. Go ahead and add the little highlight dot. Dots. Okay, now for the finishing touches, we're going to outline everything with lamp black. It's going to look pretty faint because we're going to just load the black with water. Super thin, super runny. I'm going to load this little script liner full. Touch it to a paper towel. And I'm going to start outlining everything. And I want to start in an inconspicuous place. Um, probably go across the top. I'm going to outline very thin and not real consistent. I, I don't want uh, I don't want this to be overbearing. Just want to have cute little outline on all the little elements. My, 
And again, this is my 180 script liner. So we're just going to define all these little shapes with this super thin uh, black. And just reload as often as you need to, but just make sure that you touch it to a paper towel after you reload so that you don't get any really thick black lines. Okay, so there's the border. Now let's do the letters. Remember, thin is our friend. Okay, I'm going to keep outlining. And now with some peacock teal, I'm just going to add some floating around the letters and around the bunny. Maybe a little bit around the roses. This is just straight paint and a uh, straight float. Actually, I think I want to go on this side of the letters. So to the left and under, underneath. And if you find it really difficult to shade these small areas with such a big brush, feel free to um, work your way down to a smaller size or an angle brush even. Okay, I shaded around the letters. Now I'm just going to shade a little bit around the bunny. And then the flowers.
don't think I want to go all the way around the bunny. But maybe um, in the areas, like in the little corners there, around the ears, um, around the base of the ears. Like right here in the neck area. Just to give him a little bit of shadow and then the same with the leaves and the roses. May not do it everywhere, but I do want to have some of the shading. And I'm going on the inside of the border and not on the outside of the border. You don't want it to be really uniform or really obvious. And then uh, with first dragon fruit and then titanium white, I'm adding just sprinkling dots everywhere. Around the flowers, around the bunny, around the lettering. Okay, and there we have it. So I hope you enjoy painting this fun watercolor. It was really quick, really easy. I'm going to go back and touch up the letters a little bit, and then I'm going to call it done, put a nice sentiment inside. And remember, you can put any sentiment that you want on the front as well. Happy painting. See you next time.